Story continued from Hell Creek Playlist. It is mostly quiet down by the river. Only the rustling of leaves in the wind and the distant calls of Alamosaurus that occasionally break the silence. From between the trees, a bird-like head on the end of a long neck peeks out and checks the coast is clear. Satisfied, the dinosaur steps out into the open, revealing a compact body covered in feathers, with long arms and legs, each one ending in hooked claws. At 3.5 meters long and standing over 2 meters high, this is a male Anzu, one of the largest of the Oviraptor family. Anzu are omnivores and will eat just about anything they can fit down their throat. This male has arrived here after a failed attempt to steal an egg from a Tyrannosaurus nest. He had almost succeeded, but was revealed to the mother by a Treya Chungus, and upon seeing the giant predator rise off the ground, he made the wise choice and retreated. He was alive, but quite hungry now. The river was a decent place to search for food, but there were also usually plenty of predators here as well. With careful steps taken to create as little noise as possible, the Oviraptorosaur cautiously makes his way down to the water's edge. There is far more to worry about than the lumbering T-Rexes in this forest. Further down river, he can see one such threat. A hundred meters away, resting on the riverbank, is a Thoracosaurus, a six-meter crocodilian. Though his long jaws are better suited to snapping up fast-moving fish, to the Anzu, however, anything that large is considered a threat. He did not live this long by underestimating the other creatures he lived alongside. Keeping one eye on the scaly reptile and the other on his surroundings, the tall dinosaur quickly lowered his head down to the water and lapped it up. He almost submerged most of his head, guzzling down as much as he could while keeping his eyes above the surface. Having drunk his fill, he then lifts his head back up, observes his surroundings again, allowing the remaining water to trickle down his neck, before turning around and going back the way he came, returning to the relative safety of thicker foliage. Later in the night, the Anzu sleeps beneath a tree, but is awoken by the movements of small animals close by. Raising his head while still laying down, he sees a pair of pectinodon that are foraging, the Troodontids wouldn't even come up to his knees, and are no threat to him. However, memories of being chased down by these carnivores in his early years make the Oviraptorosaur rise from his slumber. The two Pectinodon have no idea the Anzu is even there, until the angry omnivore starts running at them, through the ferns opening up his arms showing his long feathers and curved claws. Instantly recognizing the danger, the smaller dinosaurs bolt away from their attacker, disappearing into the night. The faint sound of leaves crunching underfoot, the only clue to their whereabouts. The Anzu doesn't pursue and soon begins to preen himself. He may be one of the largest predators in the forest, but he is by no means safe. Even fully grown, he has many predators of his own. Plus, there are countless powerful herbivores like Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, and Ankylosaurus, all living in the same area, and all easily able to flatten him. Because of this, Anzu are often very aggressive, and so if they can't outrun something, their usual response is to go all out on the attack. In an Anzu's world, it's survival of the most ruthless. Now wide awake, he decides to feed on some plants. These will help with his hunger, but don't have all the nutrients he needs, which is why he tried to raid the Rex nest earlier in the day. If he doesn't eat from a wide range of sources, it's entirely possible his body could shut down while having a full stomach. As he eats, he hears something is approaching. Turning to face the source of the noise, he can see a bipedal animal around his size is approaching him. It doesn't take long for the juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex to reveal itself. It may be a Rex. However, while the adults are powerful, bulky, and huge, the young are small, lean, and agile. In fact, they almost look like different species. The youngster hasn't perfected the art of stealth. So, after the Anzu notices her, 
She gives up and approaches the taller dinosaur, going from hunting to curiosity. The male Anzu faces the predator and watches her approach, flexing his fingers and lightly clacking his beak. It was a warning, but only a half serious one, as he didn't view the young theropod as much of a threat. But she continued to approach, and eventually, he had enough. Jumping forward, the Anzu spread both arms out, lifting one leg up, kicking the rex in the face. She reeled as the Overaptor began to peck at her head, giving her no chance to retaliate. It is effective, and the juvenile retreats back the way she came, letting out shallow chirps. Having successfully chased off another annoyance, the Anzu returned to feeding. It took less than a minute before he heard the T-Rex coming back. Confused as to why, he turned around, but soon realized she wasn't alone. There were four of them now. The retreating Rex had gathered up the rest of her pack, and they looked eager to settle the score on whatever had injured their packmate. The Anzu faced them and spread his arms out wide, clacking his beak like before, and though the group of predators were being cautious, the four of them were spacing out, looking to surround the bully turned possible prey. The Anzu knew he couldn't fight off four of them and cut his losses. He tucked his wings in, swiveled, and broke into a sprint, crashing through the ferns and ducking under branches. Over the sound of his own retreat, he could hear the young Rexes were giving chase, but he was far more experienced than them when it came to sprinting through dense forests and was leaving them behind. They were tenacious, however, and so he would have to keep up his run till eventually they gave up. He was so focused on what was behind him, he didn't pay attention to what was in front of him. The Anzu has run right into the path of the area's top predator. Trees part and branches snap as a fully grown, nine-ton Tyrannosaurus Rex bursts forward, taking full advantage of food practically landing at his feet. The Anzu tries to turn but skids along the ground, falling on his side. He quickly rights himself, but the monster carnivore is too close and grabs the feathery meal in his jaws. He squeals as the Rex tosses him further back into his jaws to hold him more secure, and then shakes his head violently, not needing his powerful bite force, just the rapid movements to break the victim's bones. It only takes a few seconds of shaking, and the Anzu's cries go silent, replaced by the barely audible pops and cracks, as nearly every fin bone in his body breaks. Eventually, the Tyrannosaurus stops shaking his head, knowing his meal is dead. He darts his eyes over to the four juvenile Tyrannosaurus he didn't even know were there, running in the opposite direction, fearing for their lives. The successful male throws the mangled body into his jaws back further down his throat, and slowly swallows the meal whole. That was satisfying, but he is currently looking for enough meat to feed his mate who was guarding their nest. So he went back to doing what he was doing before the Anzu ran right into him, tracking down a meal big enough to feed two Tyrannosauruses. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the demon bird Overraptor, Anzu. The first remains of Anzu were discovered in 1998 on a private ranch in South Dakota which included two disarticulated skeletons. A third skeleton would be found on another ranch in North Dakota. Finally, a fourth specimen, which consisted of just a lower jaw fragment, officially discovered in 1993, was attributed to this genus. All were from the Hell Creek Formation, and so they were concluded to be from the same species. So in 2006, all the remains were brought together for study resulting in about an 80% complete skeleton. Being from the Hell Creek, and as it looked very bird-like, the team of scientists working on it originally wanted to give it a name along the lines of Chicken from Hell, but apparently the Latin and Greek for that didn't translate well. So in 2014, it was officially named Anzu Wileyi, the genus name being after a Mesopotamian demon of the same name, which is often depicted with bird-like features though has features of other animals as well. The species name is after the grandson of one of the museum's donators. Anzu belong to the Overaptosauria family, of which there are two major subfamilies, Overaptoridae, 
and Canignathidae. Though very similar, Canignathidae were larger, had longer, less robust jaws, longer, more gracile arms and legs, and seemed less adapted to herbivory. Anzu itself was placed in Canignathidae, being closely related to Canignathus itself. From the accumulated remains, Anzu was estimated to have grown to between 3.5 and 3.8 metres long, stood 1.5 metres tall at the hip, with the head reaching over 2 metres high. What's most surprising is that its estimated weight based off the femur is between 200 and 300 kilos, quite heavy coming from a family that is known for being lightweight. It lived in North America during the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous between 67 and 66 million years ago. Most oviraptors from North America are known from pretty poor material, so having a genus where we have most of the skeleton is a nice change of pace. In general, oviraptor skulls are quite rare, but we have a fairly well preserved one of Anzu. Looking at the skull, we can see a thin crest starting near the tip of the beak, going all the way to the back of the skull, creating a crescent shape. The crest was very slim, being described as paper thin, and likely only used as a display feature. Below we have the toothless beak, which was longer, thinner, less robust, yet sharper than almost all other members of its family. It seems more suited to slicing than crushing, but given its size and that oviraptors in general had pretty high bite forces, it could no doubt still deliver a powerful chomp. The rest of the body is typical of its family, with a long neck with spaces in the vertebra for air sacs, a compact body with long forearms with three fingers. The first finger, or thumb, was the thickest, the second was the longest, and the third was the smallest. Each was tipped with a curved claw, likely used to manipulate or snare its food. The tail was short for a theropod, but this is normal for almost all oviraptors. The legs were long and strongly built, so Anzu were likely good runners. The findings of feathers on some of its relatives are a good indication that Anzu had them as well, likely being all over the body, though to what extent isn't known. At over 200 kilograms, Anzu was quite a large animal and likely filled the role of medium-sized generalist. Oviraptors overall are commonly seen as omnivores. Anzu likely could have fed on just about anything. In terms of flora, it had the crushing potential to break open hard seeds and nuts, plus the shearing potential to cut through leaves and other plants. In terms of fauna, any small animal could have been a target from mammals, reptiles, and even small species of dinosaurs, and the juveniles of large ones. Whether it only went after animals it could fit down its throat in one go, or it was smart enough to tear apart its meals, isn't known. However, the musculature that connected to the jaws show that it could move them in a forward and backwards motion, so it did have some ability to chew. Whether it behaved more closely to a predatory terror bird, or a herbivorous emu, we don't know, but its behaviour was definitely influenced by the other animals it lived alongside. As said earlier, Anzu lived in the Hell Creek Formation, home to some of the most famous dinosaurs, including Triceratops, Taurosaurus, Edmontosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus rex. These giants were likely all avoided by any Anzu, which would look rather small in comparison to them, not to mention similar sized creatures like Pachycephalosaurus, Decoderaptor, and Struthiomimus, which may have been competitors. Perhaps Anzu lived together in flocks in order to have more eyes and ears to check for danger. Or it could have been a loner, sticking to the more denser forests, acting like a modern cassowary. An animal I reckon it shares quite a few resemblances with. Anzu lived in an ecosystem dominated by floodplains, which is quite different to the majority of oviraptors found in Mongolia and China, which lived in semi-arid to arid environments. Whether this made life easier for it than its Asian counterparts, however, is up to you. Several injuries were found on the fossil specimens, including a broken rib and a toe which had torn muscles. These could have been from predators, or from fighting with other members of its own kind. Anzu is a wonderfully complete species, from a family only known from fragmentary remains in North America. It's also one of the largest of its family, 
showing how diverse they were and that Overaptors could fill and even dominate various niches. It's also one right for speculation, as its avian-like appearance leads many to perceive it as acting much like modern large ground birds, which seems fair to me. But what do you think of Anzu? And for my question of the week, do you see it as a timid creature that would run at the first sign of danger, or as an aggressive fighter that knew when to stand its ground? Well, lesser known dinosaur, would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. Do you know why we find so few Overraptor skulls? It's because most of them were bastards that play Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and had the martyrdom perk equipped to their brains so that when they died their heads exploded violently taking any poor sod down with them. Because that's a fair and balanced thing to do.